So in 2014, I traced this basically from a base and added my face onto it. And then in 2021, I can draw something like this in just a few minutes. So that would sound like it took me seven years to get good at anatomy, right? No, that actually only took me about two years. And so I want to explain why that is and how I made that journey, but also a lot of mistakes that I've made and I see other people making so that I can hopefully help you make a similar journey if you want to improve on your anatomy skills. So from 2014 to 2017, I basically had zero improvement or even practice drawing figures. I would just trace things from photographs. I didn't actually use a base like I mentioned before. I just traced it from a photograph reference that I found on DeviantArt. And I did a few more tracing stuff in college, but I never actually drew. So I basically made no improvement there. And just in case you're wondering, what you're watching right now is my current drawing skill, just some sketches that I did this week. So if we go back to 2017, from then to 2019, I still barely did anything. I really just focused a lot on portraits. I did make this one drawing of a figure in 2018 and a few other things similarly, but they were really, really weird and kind of had weird proportions and they weren't really fully 3D. And there were a lot of parts that are just flat. So I'll show you a couple drawings like that that I did. And I rarely did these. So I really barely made any improvement. We're talking like maybe five figure drawings that I did over this time. So in December 2019, I decided I wanted to get a little bit better at figures. And I decided to do a few of these little studies where I would kind of like measure the head sizes and try to do my own overall general flow sketch. And they look really rough and really tired. And I quickly realized that I was going to have to put that on the back burner and focus more on faces. But that didn't last too long because next year in 2020, I took a course called Analytical Figure Drawing at CGMA. It was an online course. And here's the work I did in that course. And it's a lot better than the stuff that I was doing before in 2019. But you can see it's still really stiff and boring. And the kind of figures, they just kind of look gummy and unnecessarily soft and really straight but what you can see there is that there was a pretty clear understanding of 3d there you can see i'm using a lot of boxes and cylinders to really understand where the body parts are in space even though they're not really lining up with the actual anatomy i didn't really have any really clear anatomy knowledge it was just a lot of form stuff now here's where things got really really intense so in november 2020 that same year I got really fed up with how my Inktober stuff looked and I decided I was just going to do a ton of figures to get better and I was just going to draw whatever the hell I felt like drawing and from then until about February I drew about 350 figures and that was a huge moment of improvement for me because what I did in that period of time was I actually focused a lot on drawing from other artists other anatomy and stylizations that I liked I would just copy them and try to find like little lines and shorthand ways to convey per parts of the anatomy that I felt found really appealing. And so that was really exciting. It helped me get through the massive number of figures. Some of them were from photo reference, but a lot of them were from other artists. So the time period I just mentioned from November 2020 to February 2021, I actually planned to keep going and do a thousand figures, but I stopped at 350 because I pretty much got burnt out. So throughout 2021, I decided to do figures at a slower pace, but still did a lot of them. And eventually around September, October, I decided to take another course with Will Weston at drawingamerica.com. You can see the work I did there is quite a bit better than the work I did in the course just over a year ago um, from that point in time. And I was really, really enjoying that course because, again, he he is really interested in shorthand and simplifying a lot of the more gnarly anatomy bits into something that's easier to quickly draw and understand. And that's just how I think. And so I felt like I progressed a lot from that course. And now we're at present day. So you're, what you're seeing on the screen is exactly how I draw. Again, like what you're seeing is what I drew literally the week preceding me making this video. And I want to get into now some of the mistakes that I have made in the past that I really want to caution you about. So the first one in I think is one of the most important is worrying about making mistakes. The mistake I want to make sure you don't make is worrying about making mistakes too much. So. To put this in perspective, it took me two years 
to get this massive improvement. About 2020 through 2021, I made the most improvement. Um, if you can look at the drawings that I shared here and on my Instagram stories, that's a long time. You might think, oh, it's really those two courses. If I take the same courses, I'll be good, right? Those courses took about eight and six weeks respectively, which is about 14 weeks and two years is 104 weeks. So if we subtract that, that leaves us with 90 weeks, right? 90 weeks in between. And I guarantee you that if you took away those 90 weeks of practice, I would not be nearly as good as I am today. I guarantee you that. So the reality is not to worry about taking the right course, right? You don't want to worry about taking like, oh, I've got to take the right one. What is exactly what Josh did or what other artists did? That two years is 104 weeks. That's a lot of time. There's a lot of things that you're going to have to do throughout all that time to get better. There's no way to condense it. There's no shortcut. You have to practice during that time. And so it this should help you feel much less stressed about doing the right things. It wasn't that I accidentally did the perfect thing every single week. That's not what happened. I learned as I went. And so I want people to understand that you can do basically start wherever you want to just always have a mindset of, okay, what's working? What's still difficult to me? And why is it hard? Am I having trouble remembering different parts? Am I having trouble trying to simplify it because I don't necessarily want to do super detailed anatomy, always think about those kind of things and always kind of try to get an understanding and then try something new and look at how other people are approaching things and give a really good effort in trying that as you're going along. Another big mistake that I don't want you to make, and this is something I did, is to blindly draw from reference. So during those 350 drawings that I did, I kind of was doing that. I did improve a lot. But at a certain point, I realized I wasn't improving anymore because I was just focusing on shapes a lot because I would pick references that I really liked the shapes and I would really focus on that. And I was getting really good at shape identification and I was starting those drawings from all kinds of different places based off the shape that I liked, which is a good practice to get into. But I wasn't aware that that was a topic I was studying. So what you should do is to really try to focus on a topic when you're doing different sets of practices and stick to that. And then eventually move on to like, okay, now I want to look at anatomy. I want to look at how to construct it. I want to look at how to make them look balanced. I want to make them look more dynamic. Focus on different micro topics like that as you're practicing. Another thing is to quiz yourself regularly. So a lot of people think that, you know, drawing from imagination has the potential to be a waste of time because you're not learning anything new because you're not looking at anything. But in reality, I'd like to challenge that because when you draw from imagination, you're really just creating a narrative. You're assembling things, you're constructing things, you're creating a story, basically. You're taking the facts that you know and trying to bring them out. You're practicing recall. So drawing a human body, like I want to use the analogy of like a marine biologist. Let's say this marine biologist loves to study sharks and different fish with fins and stuff like that. If I gave them a task to draw a goldfish and a shark, they would probably draw a pretty decent drawing of both of them because they know a ton of different facts about these two animals. But if I were to ask a regular person, they wouldn't be able to do as good of a job because they don't really know much different between a goldfish and a shark. They know a shark is bigger. They know a shark is longer and it has bigger teeth. And that's really it. But I guarantee you, a marine biologist would know a lot of different details and so they would even if it looks weird or really weird proportions they would make sure to key in those different details and that's where drawing from imagination really helps you it makes sure to keep you in check to know of these different things because if you know those things are there then when you look at a reference you draw them better so that's what i want to make sure you are aware of don't blindly draw from reference Test yourself regularly and make sure you're thinking about different topics as you're practicing. Another thing is to just not burn out, which is something that happened to me. So what happened was after those 350, like I said, I actually wanted to draw a thousand, but I got burnt out because I was trying to make really cool, creative figures every single day. I started out doing 12 a day, then 10 a day, then five a day. And eventually I just couldn't anymore. And for the first time in my life around February, 
I didn't feel like drawing for several days. That has never happened to me before. I've never not wanted to create. Um, the only time that was was in architecture, but I was immediately doing other creative things. So I was still being creative, but this time I just didn't want to do anything. And that was really, really crazy. So make sure to take breaks and draw fun stuff and pretend you're a professional at drawing figures already and draw stuff that you want to do that you would have liked to do. The whole reason that you're practicing in the first place, take breaks to do that thing so that you can refresh and then come back to studying later on when you want to improve. Remember, you have two years, three years, you have more, plenty of years to get better at this. So you're going to go through these ebbs and flows. This is key because the one thing I really didn't do was just take a month or two off. That's what you want to avoid if you want to improve at this pretty quickly. You want to be able to do it at a pace where you're still happy with everything and you're always drawing and that will really get you to improve faster. And my last tip or of mistake to avoid is to just not do it alone. That's that's a really key thing. That's I'm somebody who tries to do as many things as I can alone, but you want to take courses, take lessons, join different Patreons that can help you out with this. Everything will add up over those weeks, over those years. It all adds up to a huge amount of knowledge that you're going to have and a huge amount of muscle memory. Now, although I'm going to tell you about why these specific things don't really matter in and of themselves, I will try to list as many of the different things that I can remember that I've looked at over the past even four years as just my overall improvement and try to list all of those things in the description below so that you can check out the different courses and different references and Patreons and books that I've checked out in order to improve my knowledge bit by bit over the weeks. But with that being said, yes, the specific course doesn't really matter that you're going to take, right? So for example, the Will Weston course, I will say, to be honest, I feel like I got a lot more of my money's worth out of that course. There was a lot more content. There's still stuff I have not taken a look at yet. But one criticism of that course is that Will will often say this kind of goes in here like that and this does this. And it's very ambiguous kind of verbiage that he's using. He's showing you live. But for somebody who's a complete beginner, it would be helpful if he said exactly what muscle, you know, moving along what bone exactly every single time. Whereas in my analytical figure drawing class that I took with Christian Nakorda, he did that. And so that was a huge benefit to me at that time. So those two courses are different, but I gained different value, different approaches from each one. So again, I want to beat it into your heads, guys. Everything that you do during this time is going to add to you. A lot of people have asked me on Instagram after I shared my stories, like, basically they want a summary so like yeah so like give me a guide how do you do this and what they're asking me what they don't know is that i can't condense that they're asking me to spend hours to break down what i did over the past two years and give them a lesson plan if they knew that that's what they were asking they wouldn't be so rude as to ask me that but they subconsciously think that okay how can you boil that down for me but you can't right it's everything that you do during that time adds up so that shouldn't stress you out that should make you feel better and make you comforted in knowing that everything i do as long as i learn something new it's going to add to me right just constantly check like am i improving am i not improving why what's the hard thing what is the struggle and then try to think of a different approach to that while you're doing all the things i mentioned in the video and you're going to be in good shape so yeah, check the description if you want to see a list of a lot of the things that I use to help get better over the past few years. Um, also on Patreon, you should check me out there. Consider supporting me if you want to see a video that I'm making this week where I'm showing everything that I've done pretty much on my iPads because I actually keep one iPad to hold all of my artwork from 2017 through around 2019. And then I have an iPad for the past two years, 2020 and 2021. And I just am going to make a video where I just look at everything and go through each of the little things that I did to practice anatomy. And you can see the improvement growing there. Just if you want to get a closer look, um, I thought that would be a really cool video for people to check out while they're, you know, chilling at home during this holiday season. So take care, practice, stay safe, happy holidays, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.